We told you that we're going to show you a nominal launch, what happens when it's really good and when. John Holloman has that report for us. John? That's right, Bernie. As you were pointing out uh, a moment or two ago, there are lots of ways that the shuttle can get into orbit, but there is, in fact, only one perfect way. We have uh, seen that happen on most of the previous launches of the space shuttle, up until, of course, the Challenger disaster. But in a situation where everything goes just as it should go, the launch scenario looks just like this. Seven, six, at the moment of launch, shuttle crews look at their watches and begin to count the seconds for eight and a half minutes. If nothing goes wrong in that period, their launch will have been perfect. Here's what happens in the perfect eight and a half minutes. Seven seconds after launch, the shuttle clears the launch pad and begins a seven-second roll maneuver. It will turn upside down for the fast ride to space. 30 seconds after launch, the crew will slow the main engines to 65% of their rated thrust to ease passage of discovery through a short period of maximum stress on the vehicle. Then, at about a minute into the flight, the engines throttle up to 104% of their rated thrust. Commander Rick Houck will tell Houston that discovery is go at throttle up. It's traveling 2,551 feet every second now. The solid rocket boosters burn out and are jettisoned at two minutes, six seconds after launch. And the shuttle depends on its main engines to carry it the rest of the way into orbit. The main engines should do their job almost automatically until eight minutes, 31 seconds into the mission. They'll shut down at about the point they'd run out of fuel, and then the huge external fuel tank will be jettisoned into space. The shuttle is now traveling at more than 25,000 feet per second. 17,000 miles an hour on its way to orbit. The small orbital maneuvering system engines in the tail will fire briefly to make the final adjustment to Discovery's course. At 39 minutes 45 seconds into the mission, the Discovery will be in orbit 160 miles above us. They're going to mission. B, whether it happens today or at some future day, the Discovery launch, if everything goes as planned, will be just like what you just saw. John Holloman, live at the Kennedy Space Center. Bernie? John, let's listen again now to Hugh Harris, the voice of uh, launch control here at the Kennedy Space Center. OTC, CVFF. Right, VFF. Yes, T minus 20 minutes, jump is complete, step 909. Okay, we copy. And TV flight. TVD, OTC. This is TVD. All right, uh, we're ready for uh, step 917. Uh, that's what I was trying to get with you earlier. Uh, okay. What I wanted to do is, with the delay in putting the... Uh, Closing the crew hatch, we want to work that about 10 minutes before coming well, out of the 9 minute hold. This is Bonnie, shuttle um, launch control at T-minus 9 minutes and well, what holding. what you're seeing right now uh, is... At the present time, uh, astronaut office chief uh, Dan Brandenstein taking off in the shuttle training aircraft uh, to fly approaches to the runway and to take a look at the weather here in the Kennedy Space Center area. Uh, as far as we know at this point, uh, the weather here is not a problem, uh, and we have received back the uh, results from the 8 o'clock uh, balloon run, and it shows uh, that we are very close to uh, having the proper margins in order to uh, launch uh, this morning or this afternoon. The, uh, the people who do loads analysis are in the process of taking a look at uh, those winds and running through their computer programs to determine whether we can launch today. But in the meantime, we're continuing on uh, with the process here. We completed the, uh, the dump of the general purpose computer uh, and now the comparing of that uh, with the programs in the computers here on the ground uh, is in process. Uh, in the meantime, uh, back at the Johnson Space Center, everything is in readiness there, and uh, we switch to them for an update. And this is Mission Control Houston, the Ascent Flight Control Team with the Flight Director Gary Cohen and Capcom John Creighton have been in the Mission Control Center for several hours, monitoring uh, systems on board the Space Shuttle Discovery and keeping an eye on the weather at the transatlantic abort sites and at Edwards. Voice checks between the crew and Houston have been conducted. All positions in the flight control room appear to be go at this time. This is Mission Control, Houston. 
Could you copy, NTD? Uh, go ahead, uh, uh, back here at the uh, Kennedy Space Center, we're continuing on. We have not set a, uh, a new T-0 uh, yet uh, as we're uh, trying to assess exactly how long it's going to take to complete the, uh, the work uh, before we can pick up the count at the T-minus nine minute point. We expect to hear that just a, a short time from now. The countdown clock at T-minus nine minutes and holding. This is shuttle launch control. Bonnie Dunbar, uh, and, uh, Hugh Harris, launch control voice, whom we just heard, it indicated a short while ago that they're, they're about 30 minutes behind, regardless of where they place this next hole. So it's going to be some time. It certainly will not be a 10.59 launch this morning. Yes, uh, they uh, left the hatch open for a while uh, before they closed it out. So their program activities, I think they delayed until we got a better handle on what we might launch to. And uh, so we'll uh, wait and see what happens. Here we see the uh, vapors coming there from launch pad 39B. And what NASA is doing um, is proceeding very methodically because they know that that window closes at 1.41 p.m. this afternoon Eastern time. That's true. That's uh, when we have sunset at our transatlantic uh, board site in uh, Morocco. Uh, we. Uh, then would have to leave the vehicle and try again tomorrow. Uh, there is a very detailed set of procedures for each one of the console members in launch control that we have uh, we follow. They've been trained too many times. They simulate just like we do at Mission Control. And they have a checklist, and we have to uh, make certain that each one of those items has been checked off and verified before we go to the next step. As our CNN viewers tune in now around the world watching the expected launch of the Discovery, what are the five astronauts doing at this moment? Well, since uh, they got into the vehicle, they have been working out of something we call the ascent checklist. And there are certain functions they perform. They load some software into a backup computer. They uh, are uh, looking at the um, landing site data, if we have to land a uh, transatlantic abort or if we had to return to landing site. And right now, as part of the uh, T-minus-9 hold, uh, they're waiting like we all are. We have this built-in hold because it allows us to do things like catch up in the timeline. It also allows us to get a last-minute weather update. And in fact, uh, the checklist will tell us that uh, we do a weather update and we wait for the go for launch, and everybody has to agree to that. Now, you were aboard the Shuttle Challenger in 1985. You made 100 orbits of the Earth, but you sat there in the, the orbiter on your back for two hours before liftoff? About two and a half hours. It's slightly different for this crew. Uh, when I launched, uh, we were wearing blue coveralls and what we called uh, LEH helmets, and they were fairly light. Uh, we now have uh, these special uh, suits, uh, pressure suits for the crew. They're much bulkier. They're a little bit warmer, so they're probably not quite as comfortable. So this is a real uh, test in endurance, I think, to sit through this hold. And it's a bit bulkier in that cabin now on the flight deck and, and down below where the fifth member is because of the added safety features? Well, of course, there are some safety features uh, added, but I think if you had to look at it on a percentage basis, there is more bulk, but it's not significant. A lot of people down here are watching uh, this scene, Launch Pad 39B.